sure that you um, um, can see. So my presentation is crammed full of information, um, 66 slides in total, um, all relevant, I assure you. Um, it's all in your packs there for you to take away. There's the channel alluded to will also be available up on the website. So without further ado, I'd like to get underway. I thought I'd like to just start with some very much um, headline observations that I've been making through the season or for the season, and we will see um, a long-term trend broken. We've become very used to year-on-year -year growth in global grain demand. 2012-13 is likely to break that trend. U.S. May supply has become a long-term driver. We are now in our third consecutive season where the U.S. May's issues have become an issue. And as a result of that, I'm very pleased to have um, Mike O'Day here from FC Stone, based in Kansas, to be talking to us about the role of maize in the market and its huge implications that it has on our prices of grain here in the UK. Extreme weather has now become the norm. We only have to look at 2011 versus 2012 in the UK to see that we've moved from one extreme to the other. The global wheat market certainly is having to become more assertive in the wider grain complex, um, largely due um, to stock drawdown, and it can no longer afford to purely be a passenger of the, wheat mar of the maize market as it has been in the last 18 months. A relatively new area for forecasters to grapple with is demand rationing. We saw hints of it last season, but it's a real issue this season, and it's another area of uncertainty and a potential source of volatility. The paper this morning is, is mainly going to be focusing on the fundamentals of supply and demand in the grain and oilseed markets. We really cannot afford to ignore um, some of the drivers coming from the external factors, notably political drivers, but also macroeconomic also. Generally with politics, we've got a US election coming up next month, and that can have implications for the global economy, confidence in demand, confidence in commodity growth. We also have German elections coming up next year, potential implications for the Eurozone direction if the French outcome is only to go by. More specifically, we've got Ukrainian politics influencing direct policies on export um, restrictions, and also similarly in Argentina as well, and we'll cover off some of those fundamentals later in the presentation. On the macroeconomic front, the big issue remains the Eurozone and the impact that that can potentially have on global economic growth. I'm very pleased today that we also have Nathan Green here to go into some of the detail behind the Eurozone and the potential impact that that may well have. China is a, is a massive, um, uh, of massive importance to the world. Economic growth in China is essentially um, driving the global economic growth, and that's going to be a huge importance for the wider world. In terms of paper overview, I'm going to break this down into two broad sections. The first section will be looking at the grains and a commodity by commodity approach. Although there will be some, um, a little bit of divergence, there is some very interesting um, interrelationships between some of these commodities. We'll then break before we head into the oil seed section. So, moving into the grains. And the chart here is just setting the scene in terms of what is the long term driver. The graph here is looking at OECD long term um, grain demand for 2021 and, and sets out the long term challenge of population growth as um, developing countries become richer and demand a more westernized diet. 2012, however, is likely to block this trend simply because there is uh, largely insufficient supply to meet the demand and so prices have had to rise to try and ration this demand growth. Having said that, the long term trend is likely to remain and this is likely to be the trajectory that we get for the long term. A key driver is coming from the, the demand for, for animal products, and this is this graph is just looking at the demand for meat, for beef, for uh, pork, and poultry. A key driver of growth, growing feed grain demand, um, as again, more of the world demand, a westernized meat based diet, particularly on pork and poultry, a very grain intensive livestock. However, we've come into a period of stress supply in 2012, 13. Previous years, we've been reliant on running down stocks to meet production shortfalls. Now we have a production shortfall, and we have limited stock levels available, so we have to go to the next extreme, which is demand rationing. Um, I'm about to apologize for the next slide, so I'm just going to subject you to a quick economics lesson on how essentially demand rationing works. It's a relatively new phenomenon that we see in grain and oilseed markets, but it's one that's going to be an interesting driver as we progress through the season. So we start with strong prices. That has impacts on processing livestock margins, and that leads forecasters to reduce their estimates of demand um, lower. That in turn encourages the market to fall, and then buyers come around, take advantage of uh, those relative 
let's say, the better prices, wholesale prices, um, to rise high. It is not an exact science, and there is generally a lag as the physical information comes through into the market. So expect this to be a source of further volatility and price for your season. But certainly enough in the economic sessions, let's talk about prices. And I want to look at how um, prices have evolved over recent years. The graph here is looking at uh, benchmark futures prices in Chicago, in Paris, and our own price of uh, feed wheat here in the UK. In the situation, yes, the absolute prices are changing, but the relationship between these prices are changing. It's all being driven by supply and demand fundamentals. In 2010, it was initially about the Russian export ban, but then latterly we saw the emergence of uh, US maize issues. Coming into 2011, wheat was very abundant. We saw a return of Russia in terms of wheat production, its position on the global stage as a key exporter, and wheat was very, very tightly spread from the maize market, encouraging more wheat to be used as a feed grain to try and dampen some of the demand in the maize market. 2012, though, uh, is, a, is a marking a new era. Yes, we still have maize issues emanating from the U.S. drought. A tight situation just, just got tighter. Um, but also we have wheat issues emerging as well, so we can no longer afford to be the passenger of the maize market. 